give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Call upon his name and make known his deeds among the people. Certainly God has been good to us and is good to us. What a mighty God we serve. We thank God for your presence in this place this morning as we have come to lift up the precious name of Jesus and to worship a magnificent God. Thank those of you who worship via our social media platforms for inviting us into your places and spaces that you have sanctified for worship. We pray that what we offer here today might be pleasing and acceptable in his sight. Amen. Amen. At this time, we would invite you to turn your attention to our podium as our deacon's ministry comes to lead us in this morning's devotion. It's a pleasure to stand before you today and lead you in our devotion. We would ask that you join us as you relax your, your minds and open your hearts so that we can be prepared to worship our God. We know that there's a lot going on in this world. There's a lot going on all around us. And most of you will can attest to the fact that each morning and each evening, we seem to be faced with the news of something else that is going bad. The growth and spread of evil. But God has asked us to be mindful. He promised to never leave us or forsake us. And it's important that we hold on to that promise. Today's devotional verse comes from Ephesians 6, 10 through 18, if you allow me to read that. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood only, but against pr principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this age against spiritual host of the wickedness in heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Stand therefore having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayers and supplication in the spirit. May the Lord provide a blessing to the readers, the doers, and the hearers of his almighty word. I need the Yeah. 
go. Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we just come right now. We just say thank you, Lord, because you've been so good to us. Lord, we thank you because you kept us from danger seen and unseen. And, and Lord, you provided for us and you, you gave us the strength of our limbs, Father, that, that we could get up this morning and that we could come into the house of praise. So, Lord, we lift you up and we, and we magnify you and we praise your holy name. Lord, we lift up our pastor to you right now, Father. We pray that you just touch touch his body, Father. And, and, and we know that the, the things that he has need of, you already know. So, Lord, we pray for his comfort. Father, we pray for the ministries of this church that we would continue to lift you up and magnify you before men. We pray for each and every home that is represented here today. And Father, the spirit of the saints just bring and cast all of our cares at your feet. And we claim the victory and right now in the precious name of Jesus, we pray. And all the saints of God said, amen, amen, amen. amen. and amen. amen. If it had not been for the Lord on my side, tell me where would I be? Where would I be? If join us in the powerful, precious privilege of giving. God has granted us an opportunity to be like him, to give as he has given. We ask that those of you who have already given your benevolent offerings in the sanctuary, in the foyer, we thank you so much for that. Those who worship via our social media platforms can join us in this wonderful experience uh, via the Givelify app found at the greatermountcavity.org website. You can also bring your benevolent offerings by Monday through Friday. Between the hours of 9 a.m. and 1 p.m., someone will be here to receive those gifts, or you can just drop it in the mail, 1400 Robinson Street here in Jackson, Mississippi. With gifts in mind and in hand, let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, we thank thee for this blessed hour of giving. Father, we ask now that thou wouldst receive of our hands those things that thou hast granted us. May they go for the purpose intended for the upbuilding of thy kingdom here on earth and the relief of the poor. For it is in the blessed name of Jesus we pray. Amen. And now we would invite you to turn your attention to our video monitors for our morning announcements brought to us by our own sister Barbara Stevens. And welcome to Greater Mount Calvary Baptist Church. If you're worshiping with us this morning in person or via live stream, it is our prayer that you will receive a tremendous blessing from our service. We will observe the Lord's Supper today. It is our desire that you will join in with us and partake in this sacred act to give thanks and remember the sacrifice of Christ at the cross for our sins. These are our announcements. Please save the date. On Saturday, April the 27th, the ladies of Greater Mount Calvary will host a paint party from 11 a.m. until 3 p.m. in the Family Life Center. Ladies, this will be a day of fellowship and fun. You will be able to showcase your artistic skills, enjoy food, and have fun in a relaxed environment among friends. 
For complete details, please get a flyer from one of our ushers or see Sister Beverly Williams, the coordinator. Please contribute to our pastor's weekly love offering. This is our special expression of love and appreciation for his many years of service to the Greater Mount Calvary Church family. Please see the ushers for special love offering envelopes. Church family, let us continue to pray for all of our sick, shut-in, and bereaved families. On behalf of our pastor, Reverend John E. Cameron Sr., thank you for joining us today. Please enjoy the service.
Sometimes I just feel like blowing on my hand. I believe the word says it's that everything that has breath. Let it praise the Lord. As we prepare for altar prayer, those of you who desire to join us here at the altar may come. Father, we come in the matchless name of Jesus to say thank you. Thank you, Lord. Father, you watched over us last night as we slept and as we slumbered, and you allowed us to witness yet another day on this side. And now, dear Master, we want to thank you for traveling grace, for allowing us to assemble here in this place where you've chosen to place your name. Thank you, Lord. And now, Master, we want to come, Father, lifting up those, Father, who on their sick beds this morning. Those, Father, who are in convalescent care, Father, those who stand in need of a healing. We ask that thou wouldst let down the hem of thy garment, that someone might touch by faith and be made whole. And now, dear Master, we pray, Father, for those who are behind prison bars. Father, those who stand in need of comfort and a reminder that someone still cares. We know you as a friend who sticketh closer than a brother. And so, Father, we ask now that by thy spirit, that thou wouldest comfort and keep in these challenging times. And now, dear Master, we pray a special blessing, dear Master, upon our pastor this morning. We thank you for his many years of service, and we thank you for using him in a mighty way. Yes, Lord. Comfort and keep him, dear Lord God, and touch his body, strengthen him, dear Lord. Grant joy and peace there in the midst of his home. We know that thou art able to do above all that we can even think or ask, Father. And so we ask in the name of Jesus, let thy will be done. Yes, Lord. And now, Father, for this thy servant who shall stand this morning in John's shoes. Father, we pray a special blessing, dear Lord God, that you would carry him down through the treasures of thy word. Lift him up and pour out of thy spirit. In a mighty way, feed your people this morning yes, God. as we stand in need. And now, dear Master, we pray a special blessing upon, Father, not only our pastor, but, Father, pastors who stand across the nation and around the world. Yes, we pray a special blessing upon our civil leaders. Father, we 
Pray, dear Lord God, a blessing upon the president of these great United States. Bless the governor of this great state of Mississippi and the mayor of this beautiful city of Jackson. Father, give them wise counsel and guide them that they might lead your people into peaceful pastures. And then, dear Master, when we have come down to the close of this age, we look unto thee to receive us into thine eternal care where we shall forever give you praise, glory, and honor. For you alone are worthy. We ask it all in the precious name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. They said I wouldn't make it. They said I wouldn't be here today. They said I never amount to anything. But I'm glad to say that I'm on my way. And I'm growing more and more each day. There were many that started out with me, but now they've gone astray.
hear those words that they'll never let go of his hand. God has been too good. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Maybe, maybe, maybe he hadn't been good to some of y'all. But I need some real folk in here that know God has been really I've been good to me. I can't hold my Y'all can sit back if you want to, but I've been up and I've been down. But through it all, anybody here can say through it all, God has kept I, I, I just think that 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 we get too cute for God. Like we done made it. I know it ain't good English, but it's good grace. Like we done made it. But if it had not been for God on your side, you wouldn't be where you are. You wouldn't have the stuff that you have. You wouldn't have the house, the car, the clothes. So you ought to just get down off your pseudo halo and praise the Lord like the rest. Give me just a little bit more vibe. I just believe that sometimes you ought to just let go and let God have his way. Some of us might be scared of what God might do. But if you ain't scared, why don't you just give God a great God bless you and tell the Lord, thank you. I'm, 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 I'm trying to get here, uh, but I feel pretty good. Mm. Uh, Pastor Cameron in his absence, Reverend Tate, and to all of you God's children. The book of Acts, the first chapter. Good God Almighty. I want to read in your hearing verses 1 through 3 and verses 9 through 11. When you have it, say amen. amen. The former treaties have made, O Theopolis, of all of Jesus, began both to do and teach it until the day in which he was taken up and after he through the Holy Ghost have given commandment unto the apostles whom he had chosen to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many inflammable proofs being seen of them forty days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. And verse 9 said, and when he had spoken these things, while they beheld that he was taken up, and the cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, 
which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into the heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall, shall so come in the like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. God's word for God's people. God's word is forever blessed. I want to talk for a few moments. Read the instructions. I'll be back. Read the instructions. I'll be back. Now, Easter is over. The crowd has died down. The suits you're planning to take back. <laughs> and get a refund. Amen, somebody. The shoes that was too tight. It's over. It's finished. <laughs> Very few of us ever enjoyed the luxury of coming to the end of even the most productive day and say it's finished. I have accomplished everything I set out to do today. But Jesus could do that. Jesus could say and did say right. it's finished. I've done everything that God wanted me to do. In the wilderness he conquered sin. On the cross he conquered death. In the grave he conquered hell. And now in the space as he ascends to the Father, he has conquered Satan himself. Behind him is the persecution of men. Before him is the applause of angels. Behind him is a cross. Before him is a crown. Behind him is Cabri. Before him is all of heaven's glory. Yes, he's on his way to the kingdom. On his way to heaven. His true home to sit down on the right hand of his father. But the good news is that he's coming back again. Do I have a witness here? See, the second coming of Jesus Christ is the hope for all of us that God is in control of all things. And he is faithful to the promise in the prophecies in his word. You see, in his first coming, Jesus came to the earth as a baby in a manger in Bethlehem. Just as it was prophesied. Jesus fulfilled many other prophecies of the Messiah during his birth, during his life, during his ministry, during his death, and doing his resurrection. I need you to hear me now. 
But the second coming of Christ will be the return of Christ to fulfill all the prophecies, literally and spiritually. See, his first coming, Jesus was the suffering servant. In his second coming, Jesus would be the conquering king. In his first coming, Jesus arrived in the most humble of circumstances. But in his second coming, Jesus will arrive with all the armies of heaven at his side. See, it's been prophesied, it's been promised, and it's been proclaimed that Jesus is and shall return again. That's good news for all of us in here. But you see, understand this, and I, 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 I want to be quick, but I want to be thorough. Yeah. Yeah. The first three verses, first of all, talk about his compelling departure. See, he provided proof of the resurrection. He presented himself alive after his suffering. By many, it say infallible, but that word infallible means convincing proofs appearing to them over a period of 40 days and speaking of things concerning the kingdom of God. Now, it was important then as much as it is important today that we all have no doubt about his death, burial, and resurrection. See, when you're a child of God, you got to know he lives because he lives on the inside of all to have some witnesses here. Nobody, nobody should convince you otherwise that he's not alive. Come on in the house and let me help you. There are some things that have happened in all of our lives that we know it was nobody. Not only is there a compelling departure, but then there's a challenging task. They had to wait. Now, the, the hardest thing for all of us to do Come on, you can say it out loud. We in church. It's wait. We are in a microwave society. But isn't it funny? We have to wait at a red light. We have to wait at the grocery store in line? Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We have to wait. Yeah. When they getting our hair done, yeah. 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 I was trying not to go there, but it just popped right there. Yeah. Yeah. They put chemicals in our head. Yeah. We don't know if our hair gonna fall out. Yeah. But we have to wait. We go to the nail shop, and they put all these designs. You can't say amen, say ouch. We go to the doctor's office. Somebody know what I'm talking about right there. But see, don't get complacent. Why are you waiting? Because think about the doctor's office. Your name is still on the list. The doctor is still seeing patients. So why are you waiting? You ought to go ahead and praise the Lord. Because when praises go up, I'll turn that down on me. But not only is there a compelling departure, a challenging task, but then there's a confident promise. 
See, this confidence in heaven would drive the disciples to live fearless. Let me say something to you. When God is in you and God is for you, he's more than the world against you. Do I have a witness? See, you ought to have the confidence that if I'm going through it and God is with me, how many of y'all know everything going to be all right? Yeah. See, see, I, I, I just believe we worry too much about nothing. God said, when you trust me, I'll make a way out of no way. Won't he do it? Y'all better ask the children of Israel. When they got down to the Red Sea, they start complaining. But God blew his nostrils and parted the Red Sea. Yeah, but, but I don't even have to ask the children of Israel. You can ask your neighbor that's sitting beside you that them bring through some stuff and know that God made a way. The disciples understood that no matter the cost, they were going to tell everyone about the goodness of the Lord. But then, let's go over it one more time. First of all, there was a promising of provision. That's in verse 5. He said, John baptized you with water. But not many days out, you will receive the Holy Ghost. See, the Holy Ghost shall make room for you. And not only you, it'll make room for your ministry. Because you do know we all have a ministry. Yes. See, when the Holy Spirit takes control of you, yes. you will speak with boldness. Yes. Because you know who you are and you know whose you are. Thank you, Lord. But not only is there a promise of provision, but then there's a promise of power. Yes. That's in verse 8. Mm. He said, but you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you. Let, let me paraphrase that for you this morning in the Reverend T. T. Taylor translation. It says, you have received the power of God when the Holy Spirit come into your heart at salvation. And now, Ye shall be a witness, both in Jackson, in Mississippi, in the United States, and all over the world. Jesus wants us to live in such a way that there shall be no doubt when people see you that they know there's a God that lives on the inside of you. Not only is there a promise of provision, a promise of power, then there's a promise of purpose. Watch what he said. He said, you have an assignment. He said, your assignment is not only to come to church, and worship me. He said, but your assignment is to go out and tell somebody else that I live. He said, that's your whole purpose on the face of the earth is not to lift you up, but to lift me up. You want your blessing? Lift him up. Huh? You've been praying about something? Lift him up. You've been on your knees at night? Lift him up. Whatever you need. How many in here know that God got it? All you got to do is call on his name. But he said, he said back in verse, the inflatable proof. Now, 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 I need to share this with you. Because in John 20, 
Oh, good God Almighty. In John 20, he talked about the inflatable proof, but there was one that stood out. He talked about when, 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 when they came to the tomb. And the stone was rolled away. Said so Mary Magdalene and all of them went in and saw. But they ran back. And they got the disciple. They got Peter and John. And it said when Peter oh, good God, made it to the tomb. Said Peter looked inside. And what he saw was what what was the linen clothes laid and wrapped up to one side. But when he looked at the hay, he saw, he saw that, that the napkin was still folded. Come on in the house with me. See, in, in, in the olden days, in the Bible days, that when a king was sitting down, ready to eat. With all his subjects. Yeah, 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 yeah. All of them was round in, in the servants that, that served the table. What they would do was just look at the king. And when they looked at the king and the king got up, if they saw that his napkin was wadded up, that mean that the king was finished. But if they look and they saw that the king's nap, somebody give me some bio, was still folded. That, that mean that the king was not finished. When Peter saw the napkin, Jesus was telling that I'm not finished. I'm coming back again. The two angels that were standing there told the disciples that while standing here gazing in the heaven said, said, said that same man yeah that raised a widow woman's son. That same man that stopped the bleeding of a woman with an issue of blood. That same man yeah, that, that healed the woman that was stooped over for 18 long years. That same man that heard your prayer, your prayer, and your prayer, that same man is coming back again. Anybody in here going to wait on the Lord? Because when you wait on the Lord, everything, oh, good God Almighty, everything, will be all right. That same man that walked the streets of Jerusalem, that same man, they hung him high and stretched him wide. That same man, they laid him in a borrowed tomb. But early, 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 son 
the morning he got up for all of our hang up and that's why I got a reason to praise the Lord anybody here got anything you can thank the Lord for have he been good to you have he blessed you have he brought you a mighty long way if you know he is say yeah say Say yes. Is he all right? I come to tell somebody if you hold on to God's unchanging hand, everything. How many of y'all know everything? How many of y'all really know? Everything gonna be all right. If you know it's gonna be all right, just wave your hand and say thank you. Tell him thank you. Say yeah. Say I didn't think I was going to make that. Because I feel too good. God been good to me. Anybody in here just feel like I feel and know that God been too good to me. He woke me up this morning. Started me on another day's journey. I don't know what the next hour may hold. But while I got a chance, I'm going to tell the Lord, thank you. If we were back in 1960, 1970, uh, don't y'all look like that because some of us die? Huh? They would say, just another day. There. Just another day that the Lord has kept me. He kept Just another day Wouldn't have a religion I couldn't say Sometimes Right now, 
Everything is gonna be alright. Oh, I 